I'm going to have to read because that's what I do. That's what I do. So. <laughs> the success of the block the vote action was based on a coalition of many different organizations with a common interest showing solidarity with the Palestinian national liberation struggle by contributing to the BDS movement in this country. The target of the action was Israeli leadership, as we all know, which was scheduled to the block dock in the port of Oakland. At the time the coalition came together, Local 10 of the ILWU, which represents the port workers um, who unloaded cargo at the port, were negotiating a new contract. In targeting the same ship, the coalition made it clear, as Sarah mentioned, that our target was the ship itself and the Israeli economy. Like many workers, the longshore workers don't choose the cargo they unload. They show up for work, and management sends them to this or that ship. The ILWU had a long, it has a long and progressive history of progressive and radical labor, solidarity with the struggles of workers around the world that goes back decades. Time doesn't permit to list them all, but there's one very relevant action to the, to what? To the, right. we can take 10 minutes and shout out all the other slogans, all the Mumia, you know, Iraq, it's, it's a long list. But there was one that's relevant to the block the vote action, and that was that in the 1980s, the IWU organized to shut down the ports across the West Coast and saw the damage from South Africa. <laughs> that was the BDS model that we looked to. And that's the way in South Africa. So that says a lot about what um, BDS is going to do and is doing. So the coalition reached out to the union to explain the action was part of an anti Zionist BDS movement. Coalition members went to the Union Dispatch Center, handed out flyers, and talked with workers about the planned action and the issues behind it. So when the day came for the action, the workers were informed of what was, what was going on. The plan of the coalition was to set up community picket lines and all their entryways to where the workers entered the port. The ILWU could invoke in their contract a clause that says, if there's an unsafe working environment, they will not, they don't have to cross and go to work. So, the plan was to make that to begin. We created an unsafe working environment and, um, sorry. So they would, they would invoke that clause. The determination if there was an unsafe workplace environment was to be made by a third party supposedly neutral to the conflict. It was critical that the arbiter, when they came to the picket line, that we were strapped, strong, loud, and creating an unsafe working environment. As you know, that's exactly what happened. We got out there before the morning shift. We established picket lines in four to six places. The workers showed up, and then they were sent away after the union invoked the clause. So there's a lot more to that sentence. The ship was not unloaded that day. The longshore workers who did not work that day lost a full day's pay. So their action was not without sacrifice. The action, while very modest in history, in the history of the struggle for the liberation of Palestine, demonstrates how a coalition of forces came together, officially and unofficially, with a plan and a realistic understanding of what the factors were in shaping the successful action. Long live international solidarity. An entry of life is an entry of all of the scientists of all of Palestine.